facing this afternoon. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. As Ignati said, I'm from that foundation, just as Fernando, and I will speak about uh, uh, what has been mentioned already, but not. we are mostly reading about uh, ionizing uh, uh, radiations which produce changes within our body. And the uh, redden gas, particularly, which is well known in some places, such as in Madrid, mountain, I mean, uh, it's kind of radio radiation, it is true, and in other places they have never heard about it. Now, now to start with, just have an electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, they have been tr describing the, fur the half par uh, right part of the slide, and I will speak about the second one, the one on the left, from the UV, then we have the non-ionizing radiations, but from the UV on the left, we have the ionizing radiations, which are able to ionize the matter, to produce energy, and to alter the matter. Uh, among them, we have x-rays, of course, we've all heard about it. Uh, we use them a lot in uh, X-rays, uh, gamma uh, rays coming from space, and we can also have the uh, alpha and beta particles, which are the ones which will uh, be uh, produced by radon. The alpha one, well, no problem. It's just a piece of uh, just our skin or a piece of paper will just stop them. But for the other one, beta one, we need aluminium. The gamma rays, uh, we need lead at least to stop them. And from the X-ray as well, the radiologist uh, will be protected by a lead uh, plate. Now, to, to us, we get constant radiations on a daily basis. More radiations are from, from a natural uh, source in the field of medicine. 30% of radiations we get from nuclear energy, 0.3%, only 0.3%. Then we have the natural radiations, which represent 69%. And out of the 69%, half of them we come from radon. This is why it's so important to take it on board. But we have other natural, we have the cosmic radiation, food stuff, etc. From the cosmic ra radiations, constantly we get radiations from the space. Uh, a lot of particles which go through our hand normally, get across our hand really. It doesn't have much impact on us. I mean, we are not astronauts. Uh, living uh, elements and uh, K40, uh, uh, carbon-14, of course, which is present in the atmosphere, uh, and uh, it enters our body because we have a lot of carbon in our body. Uh, Calcium-40, as I said, is present also, uh, uh, the famous uh, banana. Uh, sorry, p uh, potassium-40, which is uh, uh, radioactive, but no uh, problem, really. Uh, seafood, uh, fish and fruit. Well, uh, perhaps seafood, you could be careful about the uh, other types of problems. Now, the noble uh, radioactive gas, radon. What is the problem about it? It's a, it's a noble gas, I call it. It doesn't react with anything. I mean, it just stays the way it is, the way it's been created, so to say. It's not like uh, oxygen, which will react with uh, hydrogen to form water. No, it, no uh, odor, uh, etc., and colorless. So it's very difficult to detect. We'll never know whether we have radon or not in our home. And that's where we look for it. It comes from three different types of reactions. Now, um, the thorium-232, which is called toron, but is radon. But uh, radon coming from thorium is quite limited, and it has a half-life of about a few seconds. 
comes from uranium 235, which is quite limited as well. Only 0.7% of uranium in the Earth comes from uranium 235. So the biggest problem is the one in the center, the uranium uh, 238, which is very abundant. 99.3% of the one existing on the Earth. So it practically, I mean, it has a, a quite a half life of 3.8 days when it's enter our home. It will stay practically four days on it before degrading. Now, what is the measurement unit in Beckel? Yes, so per cubic meter, the number of disintegration per second in a cubic meter. This is the composition of that measurement. Now we have the 3.8 days. Now it's a, it's a logarithmic relationship. So we have 1,000 atoms of radon to start with. At 3.8 days, it's half of it, 500 atoms of radon. After 7.6 days, that is to say the double, we have half of 500, that is to say 250 atoms, in order to reach 62 atoms about a fortnight. In less than one month, practically, we, we no longer have radon if we have a, an excellent ventilation. So the problem is not is long uh, life cycle. The problems come from other things. What is the problem of radon? As I've said, doesn't stay much does last long, but as I said, it doesn't form any compound. So per se, it's not a problem if we have it around and we are able not to breathe it, no problem for us because it will not cross our skin. But the problem is a gas, is that it is a gas, it enters our lungs and immediately it will be converted in polonium. And then uh, it will be lead 214, polonium again 214, etc. And lead. And they're all radioactive with a half life which is longer. The lead 210 will last 19 years. And from one state to, to another, we will get, every time we get to radiation, which is radioactivity. In that case, yes, we speak about radioactivity. So within our lungs, there are some energy uh, discharges which can alter the type of uh, uh, lung cells and produce tumors and uh, other problems as well. Now, the radon, as I said, come ma comes basically from uranium. All rocks has got uranium, but some more than others. And uh, I, mean, I mean, we measured PP as PPM. It's million of particles. How many correspond to uranium? We can see that the strongest ones are the igneous uh, rocks and uh, volcanic rocks which are very rich in uh, uh, silicon, silicon, and of course the lutites one, the, of course uh, the schists as well. And they have a uh, highest level of content of uranium, but also some sandstones as well. I mean, mostly depend on the way the rock is, that is to say, as to its physical uh, status. The construction material could also be a source of radon as well. It is a second focus. We can we believe that about 20 to 30 percent of a radon content come from the construction material inside a, a home or a, any type of uh, construction. So radon concentration can be high if the basic materials have been extracted from a, a natural a high radiation area. Now, then we also have other sources and natural elements which can be used for construction. But at present, the basic problem comes from the fact that some uh, cement particularly in concrete or bricks or etc., of low quality are being made by some residues and wastes from uh, 
uh, any type of uh, uh, really manufacturing processes. So we should be more careful about the type of material which we are using and uh, old type of uh, reddish uh, uh, bricks which were being used uh, before can contain a high level of radium or I mean uh, within our kitchen it's not a question of creating an alarm you know on our kitchen the really tables which are quite compact can have a very very small amount of radium I mean uh, we shouldn't really be afraid about it but anyway we know that it exists what is the impact on our health when the alpha particles are produced you can produce up to 60,000 ionization and the effects well the protein will get denaturalized and you can see an illustration of it and uh, so it loses thought of its uh, uh, some of these functions in the lipids so there's a modification in the cell membrane and the glucids can alter the relationship between structure and energy but the main problem of radon, I would say, is lung cancer. It is closely related with it, at least in 50 studies which have been made on radon, as see, have shown that between 100 to 200 bicas per cubic meter could increase up to 20% the risk of lung cancer. There is no threshold doses exactly being calculated up to now and the uh, radiant being dissolved in water could also create uh, uh, a, a, a really a digestive uh, a type of a cancer and bowel cancer. Uh, radiant will have a deterministic effect uh, but these are the minimum of the lethal effect on cells. Uh, there is a linear relationship between the dosage and uh, uh, the threshold dosage. The main problems are stochastic effects. We don't know when and how uh, will it be really uh, uh, lethal or not lethal. I mean, uh, it could affect uh, one or different cells. And perhaps uh, really uh, we know that uh, Non-smokers can also suffer lung cancer. But anyway, on that table, you can s it comes from the American Agency of Environment, EPA, and they have carried out an, esti an estimate about the amount of radon which we can have. It's a kind of 7,400 uh, BQ per cubic meter could uh, represent between 440 and 770 lung fatal cancers per 1,000 inhabitants. If we compare this, it's 1,000 times what we have outside, and it, but it will increase 60 times the risk of uh, suffering from cancer among the non-smokers. Then you can see the different relationships. I mean, 100 times the average level would correspond to uh, four packs of cigarettes per day, 1,480 uh, uh, BQ per cubic meter, it would mean the equivalent of uh, smoking about 40 cigarettes per day. Then you can see gradually the relationship, 148 or the last ones rather 37 BQ per cubic meter which is very very small uh, amount at home would be the equivalent of the risk of a non-smoker so 7.4 practically nothing uh, 20 x-rays of thorax I mean would be the equivalent we are all subject to that type of radiography so we have to see how these radon is being produced in order to mitigate, mitigate its effect, we have to know how it does occur. The radium comes from uranium, as we said, uranium, and it will convert itself in radium when the radium is uh, uh, being uh, really broken. It will produce the, what we call an exhalation, and it will move on the ground. And through exhalation, you can get a certain amount of it. Now, what are the conditioning factors? 
well, porosity of the material, the more porous material, the more exhalation, the permeability of the material will be important. If it allows a water flow, it will allow the radon as well. If you have uh, really fractures on the ro in the rocks, for instance, and in the soil, it will also have an impact on the higher level of production of radon. I mean, uh, we these uh, regions are uh, dangerous when you have a lot of rocks and fissures, etc. Now, atmospheric conditions, differences as to temperature indoors and outdoors. Now, the mechanisms of movement, well, diffusion and convection, where well, from areas in which you have a lot to one with a minor uh, concentration. And convection, what is it? When you have a lot of pressure and next door you have uh, very low pressure, so it is convection now. So it is more or less the same phenomenon. As to climate conditions, more uh, rainfalls, you have a water saturation in the soil, so the region is being retained. But with low pressure, low atmospheric pressure, we have a big difference as to the pressure between the ground and the air. So it uh, will increase in that case uh, uh, the release of radon. It's not because of being cold. No, it will depend whether you've had rainfalls or not. Now, different mechanisms have to be considered at home. It will enter through the porosity of the construction materials, which are not totally compact. You can have some uh, leaks, uh, well, uh, water pumps or really uh, pipelines, etc. How to detect it? We have different methods, instantaneous method, which are low-cost me uh, methods, but they are not useful really in order to clear up the situation. Well, at least it will uh, allow you to identify the uh, main sites and regions. But on the continuous reading method, of course, you have a constant airflow through a filter, and you will detect the presence of radium on a longer period. This will give you much more information. Well, in some cases, these uh, methods uh, are a bit expensive. So I will describe one which is much cheaper nowadays uh, before these uh, devices were being used only for research because they were too expensive. And the integrated method, you get more information on the average concentration. Now, we have that type of uh, cells. These cameras you can see here, as a, we have got just a, a charge which will know. We have it within the camera, uh, the air flows, goes through it, and the uh, radiant will release energy in the case of twinkling uh, uh, system or glittering system or sparkling system, you can see the load, uh, sorry, the charge, and you can see the total amount of radium. We have the uh, solid detectors. The radon goes through a kind of uh, reservoir, so to say, and you have uh, uh, a kind of very thin uh, lamina. You can just count the different spots which appear here, and you can see how much radon has been uh, produced. The active carbon detectors, uh, which is able to absorb gases to capture the radon. Uh, you measure the gamma radiation uh, in relation with the active carbon. The exposition time between two to seven days. And as I said, the recent types of detectors are of that type. I mean, they are called Ramon. They are Ramon monitors. Uh, they use uh, uh, the current electri uh, electricity, and it will give you the radon concentration at home on a weekly basis. You can have them during five years. So, in order to check, whether we should uh, have uh, corrective measures being taken or if you have taken some measures uh, 
uh, and uh, this, uh, this will be just the right type of devices to have. Now, as to Spain, uh, we have carried out the natural gamma radiation map. It's called MARNA project, which has been the result of the research carried out by the Nuclear uh, uh, Security Council. It is being carried out between the year 91 and 2004. Now, it's not, in fact, a radian map. It uh, really uh, tells us about the natural gamma radiation map. But from it, we can extrapolate some results, considering that the biggest problem, problematic areas are the ones we could have the highest amount of radian. If you look at it, what do we see for the gamma radiation and the red and orange? color it does coincide with the ones which know that there are higher rate and concentration. In Galicia, for instance, Madrid, I mean all the central area, part of Extremadura, have got more problems. As to Europe, no, it's a very recent uh, uh, research from last year. A joint research center has carried out some measurements of, uh, or asked the countries to carry out uh, radiant measurements and, uh, uh, on a 10 kilo square kilometers quadrant. Some countries have done it, others no. I mean, France and England, uh, you can see the results. They, and they have uh, represented a radiant map. Uh, so we can see that in Spain and Portugal, we have much more radiant concentration compared with other countries such as France, which practically has no problem. And uh, from that publication, I mean, uh, uh, GRC has started to work with uh, other uh, maps and other research centers, so we'll get more measurements, which well, takes some time, of course. Uh, so all these scientists are trying to r relate radiant with volcanic eruptions and uh, concerning the total amount of uh, radiant being exhaled. For, for instance, for the Canary Islands, it would be particularly interesting in Spain. We will see whether we can really establish a relationship now because uh, as to the regulations, it's non-existent, only recommendations. In the United States, particularly, they do recommend having not more than 150 BQ per cubic meter as an annual uh, average value. Uh, before uh, intervening. In 1987, the WHO took into account exposure to radon and proposes 100 BQ per cubic meter as an average value and 400 BQ per cubic meter for immediate action and new construction shouldn't exceed 100 becquerels per cubic meter. The European Commission on the basis of a report of the International Commission for Radiological Protection recommends to limit uh, the value to 400 becquerels per square meter in existing buildings and 200 becquerels per square meter in new constructions. This uh, is uh, 1990, right? And this happened in 1990. Uh, the recommendation of the International Commission for Radiological Commission of 1983 speaks about uh, concentrations for existing buildings uh, of uh, between 200 and 600 becquerels per square meter and for um, workstations of low occupancy between 500 and 1500 becquerels per square meter. As an example, you can see that in the UK, uh, since the 90s, the maximum limit has been of 200 becquerels per square meter in Norway. Uh, uh, annual inspections are mandatory for all housing, for all houses. In the United States, the existence of radon or the presence of radon influences the price of a dwelling. But in Spain, we are lagging behind. The technical uh, construction code approved in 2007 does not say anything about radon. The only thing it says is that the construction with 
sh should have ventilation systems to avoid accumulations of noxious air, but it doesn't say anything about radon. Noxious air could contain any type of pollutant, and it doesn't contemplate the application of measures on construction materials. Later on, the idea is to create another technical construction code, but there's, no, there's nothing of that as yet. Now, what solutions are recommended for large cities? Well, measurement campaigns in, uh, in the land and in the construction materials, and drawing, on, drawing up maps and propose prevention measures for dwellings and conduct some follow-up with the devices I showed. For private persons in their own houses, if there is radon, then you can have specific ventilation. Sometimes it's enough to open up windows, sometimes this is enough. If it is more than this, you can have a forced ventilation system. This is not very difficult. You can do this, an architect can do it. And uh, it should be watertight, and an attempt will be made to introduce barriers that prevent entrance of Raiden. So, to summarize, we always need to observe um, environmental factors and measure things correctly uh, everywhere. Ventilate our ha our dwellings is fundamental. Uh, we, uh, we should open windows in the summer, even if there's air conditioning. And uh, last but not least, it's necessary to take corrective uh, action, but we, sh we shouldn't be afraid because it's not, uh, this problem can be uh, solved and uh, there's always solutions for everything. Thank you.